Welcome to episode 8. Today I'll be discussing fabrication of the side panels for the boat. The side panels are obviously these panels here that run from the bow to the stern. Uh, we will need just two sheets of half inch plywood. Both sides will be cut from these two sheets. To maximize the freeboard of the boat, I have modified Earl Brockway's dimensions slightly to make full use of these two sheets and to simplify the layout for the sides. However, the end result will still be very close to Mr. Brockway's original lines. Begin by laying out one sheet of plywood on the floor or your workbench if you've got a long enough bench. <clears throat> then butt up the second sheet like this so they're end on end. Let's begin the layout on these two sheets. Where the two sheets <clears throat> butt together, mark the center of each panel as shown. Then mark 19 and 5 eighths of an inch along the ends from the opposing corners as shown. The cut line will be a line drawn through these three points and this will create two symmetrical panels. What I like about this is even if your tape measure is not exactly 19 and 5 eighths, if you use the same tape measure to pull this dimension here and then in the opposite corner here, the remaining length here will match this over here. And since you're going right through the middle of the panel right here, it makes these two side panels identical, provided you cut down the middle of that line. Let's continue with the layout. Mark a line across the entire panel width four and a half inches from each end, here and down here at this end. Add a second line 19 inches in from the ends on both sides, or both ends. So here's the layout so far. Mark the cuts for the transom as shown. We have uh, the cut here for this transom, and then the cut here for the transom on the other panel. Mark the cuts for the bow, like this, from here, this 19 inch setback to the corner. Same thing here, 19 inches back from the end up to the corner. Now, <clears throat> as shown, this upper panel will be the outboard face or the outer face or the outside of the boat of the right hand panel or the starboard panel. This lower panel will be the inside face or the inboard face of the left hand panel, the port panel. So here are the two panels labeled and showing the final cut lines. The two halves of each panel must be joined together. Rather than scarfing the panels, we'll just use a butt block. It's a lot simpler. Each butt block will be the same thickness as the panel and be 12 inches wide and approximately 24 inches long. The butt block for the starboard side is epoxied and screwed into place on the underside as shown by the dotted lines. Now I recommend making the length of each butt block 24 inches from the edge to this corner on the long side. You can see this cut line is tapered so the butt block can be made longer on this side and shorter along this edge. So make this 24 inches and make this edge here 23 and a half. This will make the cut tapered and parallel to this cut line and the butt block won't go all the way to the cut line. It'll be held back about a quarter of an inch, which is fine. The butt block on the port side is installed on top of the panel, as shown. 
Now note, the butt block is installed under the panel on the starboard side and it is installed over the panel on the port side. Now that we have the plan of attack, let me show you how I did it. Here are some sacrificial 2x4s spaced out on the shop floor. I bought three sheets of plywood. Two will be for the sides. Uh, these are 4x8 sheets and they are one half inch thick. This is 5 ply ACX pine plywood. It's very similar to the plywood we use for the transom, except that was 7 ply 3 quarter inch thick ACX pine plywood. You can see the two sheets for the sides are butted together here on the floor and they're laying on top of those sacrificial 2x4s. The third sheet is on the cart here in the foreground and I'm about to cut a 12 inch wide strip off its end. This will be used for the butt blocks. When we build houses we usually just let the cutoffs hit the floor and hold them with one hand to prevent kickback on the saw. Here's a tip for you. Whenever you're trying to cut plywood carefully and accurately, make sure it's well supported. This way you can concentrate on making your cut smoothly and with both hands. So you can see I've got little stickers here underneath the plywood supporting it. So when I cut this, I'm not worried about this falling off and hitting the floor or tilting in and binding the saw, so on and so forth. Here I marked the center line down the middle of the butt block. Next I laid out grid lines to install two rows of screws, one row here one inch set back and another row here five inches set back. Because the butt block is six inches wide on each half, 12 inches overall, this row of screws will be set back one inch from the edge of the butt block. The screws are spaced about four inches on center. Uh, between here and here and here and here and so on and so forth. <laughs> line up the center line on the butt block right here with the seam right here. This way you know the butt block extends six inches under each panel exactly. Attach the butt block to one panel at a time. Here it is clamped in place and ready for screws. I pre-drilled, countersunk, and screwed the assembly. That is a dry fit without epoxy. No glue is used here yet. I like to run a drywall knife over the surface to make sure each screw is countersunk deep enough. You want each screw head just below the surface so you can fill it with epoxy and not see it later. Prior to adding epoxy, it's a good idea to make an orientation mark on your butt block here and I've made it here on the panel. This way you can go back in the same way once this is all lathered up with epoxy. After the dry fit I removed all the screws, stood the panels up and lightly sanded both sides to clean up or clean off any splinters. Sand both sides of the butt blocks as well and then vacuum up all the dust. Here is one sheet uh, wetted out with straight epoxy. After wetting out the butt block, install it to one panel before attaching it to the other. Here are both sheets joined together. Here is a close up. <clears throat> now do you see my huge mistake? Yes, I forgot the butt block needs to be installed over the panel on the starboard side and under the panel on the port side. This was not real clear in the plans I had. This is why I made special note of it at the beginning of this slideshow so you would not make the same mistake. After getting this far, I quit for the evening thinking I had done an excellent job 
cleaned up, took a shower, had dinner, and went to bed. 12 o'clock midnight. Go! A few moments later. You are an idiot! <laughs> <laughs> that cracks me up every time. <laughs> How you deal with your mistakes is a fine time for God to refine your character. The next morning, realizing my mistake, I grabbed a small chisel and a utility knife to dig out the epoxy over each screw head that I needed to remove. Uh, I, one at a time. You go one at a time, and I had to remove half the screws across this panel. Two hours later. Here is the back side after removing the screws along one half. I marked a line about 24 inches, well exactly 24 inches from the edge down to here. I then carefully set the depth of my circular saw to the depth of the butt block and cut it along this line. I did not want to damage these underlying panels, so I conservatively, conservatively set the shall, a, a very shallow depth on the saw, leaving about a sixteenth inch of wood underneath. Uh, I used the saw as a plane to begin removing the rest of the butt block below this line. So I have to remove from this line all the way over to the other side. Then I just run my saw across and then there's a trick to using it as a plane, but you can just think of it as just running it back and forth. There's a faster way than just doing that, but it works. Three hours later. You can see how I have carefully removed a portion of the butt block from our line to this far here. Making sure I did not cut too deep, you can see the last ply that's remaining. Now I just need to continue trimming this away until I get to this opposite edge over here. Six and a half hours late. Here I have just I just have a small strip remaining at that edge but could no longer use the circular saw to remove it. I removed this two inch remaining strip of our of our in incorrectly installed butt block uh, very carefully using my electric plane. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. <laughs> this is as far as I felt comfortable going with the electric plane. I then used a hand plane to remove the remainder over this strip and also this remaining last ply all the way up to our trim line. Two thousand years later. This is as far as I could go with the hand plane and then I switched to a sander. After a bit of sanding I'm happy to report the portion of the butt block that was incorrectly installed has been successfully removed without any damage to the underlying panels. I won't bore you with the details, but eventually I installed the butt block correctly on the other side than what's shown here. One eternity later. Here is the correct result. Just like the plan, the butt block is now under the panel on the starboard side and is over the panel on the port side. I also cut the butt block so it is 24 inches long from the edge here to this point right here and it is 23 and a half inches long from this edge to this point here so it's got a slight taper. I also did the same for the butt block on the underside. You may have also noticed I used one and a quarter inch long screws so you can see here at each one of these little dark locations that I have cut the protruding tips, screw tips off. Don't be tempted to use shorter screws because they won't provide enough clamp up before they strip out. I use an angle grinder to remove those 
screw tips off. Uh, this has a, a cutoff wheel on it that's made for metal and it, it's pretty fast. Here I am laying out the long cut line to rip the panel into two halves. I used that long U-channel you've seen before and clamped my 8 foot long level to it to make, uh, to make sure it stayed straight. I then offset the straight edge about 1 inch from my layout line so my saw blade would cut right down the middle of the pencil line. I clamped the U-channel at one end, the end here you can't see, and added a few screws, one in the middle and one at this end down here, uh, to hold the straight edge firmly in place. Later I filled those holes with epoxy. Here I am about to finish the cut. You can see the clamp at the end and I think I had one screw in here, about this location here or maybe here. That's it. I then clamped the side panels together. Uh, this is the check to see if they're symmetrical. So I've clamped them outboard face to outboard face. I lined up the uh, factory edges together and notice the cut edge it was nearly perfectly in line. I have never had two panels line up more closely to each other than these. I was very pleased. I did take the time to do the cut perfectly and it worked out perfectly. Uh, after clamping uh, the panels together I used three pipe clamps and then these two C clamps. So after clamping them together I screwed them in five locations. So I added a screw here and at this end and then along uh, or adjacent to each pipe clamp, right down the center. After screwing the two sides together, I was able to remove the clamps and then do uh, something called clip boarding. We want the two side panels to be perfectly symmetrical. Even though these were really close, they weren't perfect. Clipboarding is a process of making the two sides exact copies of each other. By laying them down on a flat surface, uh, a sheet of plywood, this is our third sheet that I purchased, so I laid that on the floor, laid our panels on top of it. I could run the hand plane on its side, so the side of this hand plane is resting right on this sheet I laid on the floor, and then these are pressed tightly to that. What this does, this process makes sure the panels are planed at 90 degrees. So this edge remains 90 degrees to this panel. And only the overhanging panel is cut away. So I had the panels laid down this way and then I picked them up and flipped them over the other way. And just used my hand plane to take a little off so that if the upper panel was overhanging a little bit, it was planed away to match the one underneath. So after the panels were perfectly matched to each other, I was able to make the cuts for the transom and bow. And I will say, I hardly removed any material. They were so, so close to each other. I could have ignored this step, but I wanted to include it in here uh, because <laughs> your cuts may not have come out as, as well. The, the point is, they just need to be symmetrical to each other because this boat, the shape of it is determined primarily by these side panels. So you want them to be identical. Even if they're not exactly like the plan, they must be identical to each other, within reason. Here I'm about to make the cut for the transom. The bow is very similar. And here are the sides after all the cuts are made. They are mere images of each other. And this is the side with the butt blocks. So these are the inner faces or the inboard faces of the side panels. So these butt blocks will be on the inside of the boat and the opposite sides will be the outside of the boat, obviously. Next, I flipped the sides over so the butt blocks are on the underside and I laid out some fiberglass over the outboard faces of each panel directly over the seam. This is 6 ounce fiberglass cloth and it's about 12 inches wide and goes clear across the seam. Here is the fiberglass after being wet out with epoxy. Uh, this fiberglass is not required but I feel it adds extra strength and prevents fracture when the panels are bent 
in forming our hull. The next day, I trim the edges, and these edges here, with a utility knife, and did some sanding where these little strands are sticking out to smooth it up. And that concludes fabrication of the side panels. I hope, I hope you are able to build your side panels with more, more efficiently than I did. Uh, I'm sure you can. Uh, Lord willing, in the next episode, we will actually begin assembling the boat and going what I like to call 3D. So see you then, and God bless you, my friend.